talking about? Oh, the plate is like this big. Got the batter's box. You can go out. You can do hook. Softball fans, another here's the deal. We're back. No, no better way to start out your week than with here's the deal. Um, I am in studio, Sarah Hoffman, but more importantly, I have Ches Sievers and Ali Martinez remote. They are okay. sheltering in place, quarantining themselves away from me, which is probably a really great idea. How are you guys doing? Good. I'm doing great. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, given last last week, that was a tough um, emotional week for for the country and then, and for a lot of people but overall health wise spirit wise i'm okay great Allie? yep just hanging in there you know still at my parents house just hanging out over here but only jackson so yeah well, it's good it's good, it's good to see your faces it's good to see your faces chez who we got today all right so um this week we have head coach for jmu lauren laporte welcome to the show how are you? Thank you for having me. Very excited. <laughs> so I understand that you are very, very pregnant right now. <laughs> I am. This quarantine. How has that been? I am. I would show everybody my stomach, but I don't know if everybody wants to see that. Um, I am. I'm 22 weeks pregnant. I'm having a little baby girl. So hopefully a softball player. Um, and, you know, right now for me and my four year old son, we've kind of been cooped up in the house, you know, trying to stay safe. My husband's been doing all of the the grocery shopping and the essential, you know, needs um, type thing. So yeah, it's it's been different, different lifestyle. Um, but you know, trying to stay positive and you know, trying to take care of this baby girl. <laughs> so twenty two weeks. What's what does that make your due date? I'm really bad. September twenty fifth. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, so I, I did have my son a month early, so it could be August. Not okay. really sure. <laughs> she might be ready to go. She might. She's like, I want to play, start playing softball. I'm ready to go. <laughs> she might be. <laughs> so, um, have you have you thought of a name, um, or is yes. it kind of like one of those things? Okay, do you know it's, 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 it's out there. Uh, it's we're out gonna there. name her Harper. Okay, oh, her I middle name's that. gonna be Lyle, so that's a family name. So Harper Lyle. <laughs> I love that. Harper's a great Thank name. You. Well yeah, done. I like that's, it. I love that name. That's great. What's <laughs> your son's you. name, if you don't mind? Holden. Oh, so you, you, we're going with the H's. Going yeah. with the H's. It just it. rings, you know, it just flows. It flows good. <laughs> I like it. Strong choices. Well, awesome. Thanks so much for, for joining us. And, um, you know, over the last several months, we've been kind of catching up with coaches and getting the latest updates. Um, can you talk a little bit about kind of the, the planning process that you've had to go through since uh, COVID hit the country and shut everything down? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's been very difficult for coaches, you know, across the board because um, we're so used to having a game plan and um, that hasn't happened, I would say, in the last couple months now, you know, with making decisions and, and telling us where we're at. And um, it's very difficult right now for the country, for universities, for athletic administrations to um, really know what's best um, because there's no there's no answers um, on how to do things. This has never happened before. So I think people are just trying to figure out, you know, I guess it's a time thing to see if, you know, this pandemic can slow down um, so that we can kind of get back to some type of normalcy. Um, you know, our president sent out an email saying we're doing everything we can to get us back um, on our start date, you know, in August. Um, but obviously things are going to change. We've had lots of Zoom meetings and, you know, our athletic training and our doctors are trying to figure things out as far as, the what ifs, um, if someone, you know, in our, in our athletic department gets it and then the quarantine time and how, how we're going to function. Um, so I think that's what they're working on now. Um, of course, you've heard in the last probably month about budgets being cut and the finances of things. So that's another thing, you know, they're talking about and scheduling and equipment budget cuts and, and things like that. So, um, there's we don't have really any answers it's just i want my uh administrator just to tell me what to do because right now i just i feel like i'm at a hold and and that's what i'm trying to tell my girls like sometimes time just it takes time for things so yeah you mentioned it's never happened before it's pretty unprecedented it is unprecedented in all of our lifetimes most of our lifetimes there's some people who were around the spanish flu but um you know so 
given that it's unprecedented, I wonder, you know, what is it just kind of plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D? Um, do you know, you know, what specifics has JMU communicated to you in terms of phases or variations of plans? Yeah, well, you know, they shut down all of our summer camps. Um, so we're not allowed to have any camps um, on campus. And now with the dead period and, you know, being extended, um, they're really focusing on, on trying to figure out the fall sports at this point, you know, with football players um, returning back and, and what's the best practices, um, you know, as far as that goes. Um, so that's kind of the focus right now. Um, but they tell, you know, they're telling us, hey, be ready for this, this, this. So, you know, we have our schedule laid out for 50 some games, but hey, if it doesn't happen, start thinking about more regional play and cutting games and which games you would cut. Um, and, you know, the CAA haven't, they haven't released anything yet. I think we're supposed to get some kind of um, email at the end of the week, kind of telling us where we're at as a conference. So. Is that your little boy in the background? Yeah. Did you hear the dog in the, in the, in the, in the, little, in the background? I'm like, oh, gosh. I, I was waiting Sorry. for both of them to come into the shot. That's what I was waiting. I was like, I'm just hoping I'm both of them to open any second were now. coming so into the shot. Ready. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so kind of talking about things that you do know and, and, and have control over, like the eligibility extension, can you talk about um, – the seniors that are returning and how do you how are you going to be able to manage the the larger roster given some of the budget cuts that that you've talked about yeah well you know i think first and foremost you know it's we always think about the student and athlete you know first and and when we're going through budget cuts and things like that um you know i sat down with my sports supervisor um the two weeks ago to talk about okay what are some areas that we can cut um, and there were some things in the equipment that we didn't necessarily need, um, you know, as far as apparel and a, a new machine that, you know, we, we can live without. Um, we also cut out a little bit of professional development um, items in there. Not, the, not all of it, but um, it's, it's about the student athletes at this point. So we are trying to find any way we can to not affect them. Um, we are having three seniors returning, um, Odyssey Alexander, Kate Gordon, and Madison Niokas. Um, all three, you know, amazing ball players and have done so much for our program. So we're very excited about that. Um, and when it comes to travel time, I mean, I think it's just one of those things we're just going to have to wait and see. But I think, you know, roster size is going to be fine. We're going to be under 24. Um, so I don't think it's going to affect us a bunch. Can you talk yeah. about uh, Sarah? Go no, for it. No, 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 Chess. <laughs> <laughs> I defer to Chess well, Seavers you, always. <laughs> you mentioned your three seniors and I mean they've brought so much to the program can you talk about the impact that they're going to have on the 2021 season yeah I mean just to have them back I mean two, two of them being all Americans um, Nyoka is being an all region player I mean they're just you know highly talented but on top of that you know their leadership um, has been um, a big part of, of what we do in the last two years because last year Megan Good was our only senior so, you know, the juniors really had to step up and, and kind of be, um, you know, mentors to the underclassmen and to have them another year. Um, it's it's going to be easy, you know, for, for us as coaches to, to teach the younger ones uh, the way of the world at JMU. So um, they've just done so much and they're and they're such good people. I mean, they do so much for our community. Um, you know, Kate Gordon right now is, is out delivering food to all the people in her neighborhood. And she's, she's a local girl. So she's from Page County, which is only about 25 minutes from Harrisonburg. Um, so it, it's just going to be nice just to have that experience plus that talent back. Um, and, you know, it's we, Kate's an outfielder. Nyokas is an infielder. And um, Cece is a pitcher, you know, hitter. So it's nice that they are in different types of positions, too, to help teach you know the way we do things yeah you're gonna have cores of leadership in each kind of part of the field like you just mentioned and that's that you have to look at that as an asset like that you have yes. to be pretty excited going into 2021 that you have these three core players that you can kind of build around um which is with e with each of their their uh positions yeah. um you know, I, I, I was going to follow up, you know, Chez took my question. It was a great question. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Um, but, you know, you mentioned the dead period a little bit, the extension. Um, and, uh, and I think, you know, we were talking prior to the show and you mentioned travel ball coaches. How, how do you plan on recruiting during the dead period extension? 
Well, if, if compliance is allowing us to do so, it's going to be right here sitting on the computer watching games. <laughs> um, so the live streams from Flow Softball and um, Facebook Live and Athletes Go Live, I hear there are all these websites happening now. But um, as long as it's open up to everybody, you know, my compliance officer is like, you can do it. And I'm like, fantastic. <laughs> um, because, you know, there are people on our list that we still wanted to evaluate over the summer. Um, in, in the 22 class, especially um, since we make phone calls September 1st. Um, so we got to figure it out. And, um, you know, for me, being 22 weeks pregnant, um, having a nice comfy chair to, to sit in in the AC <laughs> isn't going to be super bad for me <laughs> recruiting. Um, you know, I can have five screens going at a time. Um, so that's that's all I really know how to do, you know, and um, as far as evaluating and we're kind of a lot of people are saying different things of this is legal, this isn't legal. So we're trying to go through compliance right now to, to kind of figure out what we can and can't do as far as watching games, you know, virtually um, and making sure we're doing it the right way, of course. Um, and then watching, you know, videos on social media. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's helped a bunch um, to kind of know who's interested in us. You know, they're tagging us on on Twitter and Instagram and um, seeing those those short videos has helped as well and, and to know that the kids are invested and and they're doing everything they can to stay in the shape too. I wonder if you have any specific advice for club players, club parents, club coaches right now. You know, I think we've done several shows where we're just getting tons of questions um, about how to handle this situation from these these club parents and coaches and, and players. So I wonder what I wonder what advice you might have for them during this time. Yeah, I mean, keep you know showing interest in the schools that you know you've narrowed down and and keep sending us stuff. I mean, that's all we can do right now too. So you know, I know in the past um, during the season, especially for me, emails were it, it was a lot for me to be able to focus on the team and get all these recruit emails. But right now. Um, just keep sending us things and, and stay positive. You know, it's going to work out um, and keep your head up. It's, it's hard for everybody at this point. And, you know, I think what's hard for us as coaches is when every single um, year got granted another, you know, year of eligibility, every single class. Um, I think it's hard for them too. each class, you know, especially in our junior class, they're still trying to figure out if they want to come back. And if they come back, will they take a master's and do continuing ed? Um, so it's just, everybody's just kind of in a standstill and it, we just can't panic. Um, we just, we just gotta keep moving forward and keep showing interest in the schools that, you know, you like. Any don'ts for, uh, parents or players when it comes to social media or, or sending, uh, your staff emails? Um, just make sure that if it's a copy and paste email, <laughs> you're sending it to the right school. Um, you know, I know that the emails get monotonous, but I can tell you I've gotten some emails where it's like, hey, Coach Papa. Hey, you know, even teams in our conference. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh. Wow. So, you know, I understand that you're probably sending the same emails, but make it personal um, and make it put things in there that you know, address the university and the things that you like about the university and don't just make it one blanket email that you're sending, you know, tons of coaches. And then when you try to make it personal, you forget who you're sending it to. <laughs> um, because, you know, for us, we, we want players that want to play, you know, for our university. Um, it's not just about who got the best offer and, and things like that. Like we want people to be at JMU because they want to be at JMU. Um, so do your research and, and when you write your emails, make it personal. Um, I know you good mentioned tip. that <laughs> that was a good tip. Um, I know you mentioned that y'all aren't going to be able to host a summer camp uh, this year, but what would you say would be the best case scenario for JMU camps and clinics uh, in the future? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say I'm hoping September is when we're going to get our fall camps in. And we've even talked about as a staff, um, you know, maybe doing weekly where we just do, you know, a two hour session, you know, every Monday night or something like that. And I know it's difficult for those that are, you know, traveling, you know, far away away. But just when we're when we get the green light, um, it's going to be probably a lot more. And we might, you know, do things a little bit differently in, in how we've done in the past. Um, we've even talked about doing like a virtual clinic um, for, for coaches and things like that. So we're playing with some ideas right now. We don't have any, you know, anything set in stone. 
Um, but we're, we're trying to adjust as well and, and try to see as many kids as we can see. And, you know, the nice things about camps and clinics is you can kind of talk to them and you can see if they can make adjustments fast and you kind of get that, you know, start building that relationship. So um, it'll be nice when we get the green light on, hey, you, we can get you to campus now. Nice. Given that dead period has been extended to July uh, 31st, do you see at any point um, additional evaluation days being added to the fall? You know, I haven't, I haven't heard much, um, you know, with the, with the NFCA and us trying to do some things as far as making adjustments with recruiting. Um, but there could be a possibility, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, but there might be some changes in the fall just because we didn't, you know, we weren't able to get out and evaluate in the summer. Um, but I have not heard any definites. I've heard just people talking about it and just throwing ideas out there. Um, but again, that's going to come down to the NCAA and the compliance stuff. And, and that takes some time. Um, so mm -hmm. we'll see, but I have not heard any, anything as far as definites. I've just heard talk. Yeah. I mean, I would hope so because it's it's not only uh, softball that's affected; it's the other spring sports that are that are used to recruiting during this time. Um, so, I mean, we're gonna wait and see. I hope yeah. that they open up days just for the, the kids. I think about the twenty ones, and I, I think about the twenty twos, and just not having a summer where they're seeing the coaches out watching them. Um, I would I would hope that's the case, but. We'll see. Yes, we will. My assistants will be, uh, if, if that is the case, my assistants will be out because she's coming in September. So I'm going to have to have a little bit of time to, to get her straight. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, well, we can't sure. wait to meet I, the new assistant coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll be with me a lot in the fall. <laughs> I bet. I bet she'll have a lot to say. <laughs> He's going to learn quick. Well, coach, <laughs> yeah, coach, um, for the people watching this that want to follow JMU softball, uh, where should they go? Yeah, just go to at JMU softball. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Um, coach Herzig um, does such a great job at, at putting stuff out, and, and we try to um, get our players involved and, and show, you know, everybody what we're doing um, so you can stay connected to us. Um, we have a Facebook account. Um, we also have, you know, an SID that's constantly putting out stories. So social media is big for us right now, um, especially in the recruiting world. So follow us. Thank you so much, coach. Thank you for having me. Have a good one. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we missed what's next favorite... for flow softball. We oh, missed... oh the, sorry. We, we you know, I was looking at the time, question. Sarah. We missed my favorite question. <laughs> what are they doing in quarantine? Oh. I was going to talk about the know, geography quiz. We missed it. Look, we missed look. it. We missed all. We are on a time crunch on Mondays. <laughs> I can't even. I just got. Sorry. I'm, I'm just going to walk out and leave. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what oh, is boy. next on? I'm sorry. On, what is next on Flow Softball, Ches? Tell me. Do tell well, all of us. We have a fantastic episode of. The Chaz Show with Natasha Watley that is out um, today. And um, we'll have another episode with Dana Sorensen this week. And then next week, we'll have Jazz Vesley and Alicia Casio. So we've got a nice mix there. And then this weekend, we've got the Tulsa Elite Summer Invite, uh, the PGF Early Summer Showcase, Texas 4th of July with Triple Crown, Ohio Stingray Showcase. We're just, you know, we're throwing a bunch of events at you guys, and I feel like you should watch them. <laughs> yeah, in case you didn't realize, softball mm -hmm. is back, everyone. Sure is. It's back, and we're ready for it. We've been ready for a long time, but we are mm -hmm. chomping at the bit for more live softball. Oh, yes. Um, and your show has a great lineup of people you're going to be at Tulsa elite right I will I will be there I leave on Wednesday and hoping to to see some talented kids out on the field loving life playing softball yes yeah, so if you see Chez 
run up to her well, stay socially distanced but like run up to her <laughs> give her give her yeah give her a little elbow bump <laughs> um and uh and, and just bother her. just just bother yeah her. Thanks, Sarah. My best. Well, this <laughs> show is brought to you by RX Sports, the official CBD part, CBD partner of Flow Sports, the all natural, highly concentrated CBD product, perfect for all your training recovery needs. Visit rxsportsinc.com slash flow sports for an automatic 20% discount off your entire order. Defy your pain with RX Sports. Man, not I want only, to thank our exports for sponsoring us. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Not only are we giving them, yeah. not only are we giving them softball back. There's a discount at our exports. Great things. Great things are happening on today's show. <laughs> there you go. Well, um, the next two episodes, uh, there won't be two more episodes um, on Wednesday, and uh, I guess it would be Tuesday. Um, but we'll pick back up um, next week with you guys. Until next time. Stay salty. <laughs>